Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior character artist. In this little tips and tricks tutorial, we'll take a look at what I call strip modeling, or nowadays it's called edge modeling, in 3D Studio Max. So we're going to take a look at this particular head. It's an orc head. It's obviously a fat, kind of overgrown orc. We're going to break it down into its simple forms, its simple lines. Uh, obviously, I took one side of this and mirrored it over. Uh, when modeling, it's always best to, uh, especially a character like this, it's always best to just do, you know, basically one half of the model, mirror it over. You can then tweak it as you need to to make these variations and these changes uh, in the face to make it unique. Uh, but until you're working with something like that, sticking with something that's just mirrored is usually the easiest and most efficient way to model a face. So here I have in 3D Studio Max, this is uh, the file I have set up. I have an image plane. I used this particular uh, drawing and I cut it in half, obviously, in, in Max. So if I go to my right view, I've got the side of his head. If I go to my left view, I've got the other side. It's still the same side. I've just mirrored it. So basically, it looks like this. This is the way it looks, okay? So I've got my two side views and my front view. And that's really all I need to model a face. Now there are times, in fact, when I only have a front view to model the face from. But if you can at least get an, an orthographic, and that means without perspective, without depth information. If you can get an orthographic front view and an orthographic side view, it makes modeling a whole lot easier. So let's go ahead and get right into this. Okay, I like to start off with just a plane. So I'll, I'll click the plane button. I'm going to zoom in. I'm just going to create a plane. There's a plane. Okay. I'm going to right click on it, convert it to an edible poly. All right. I'm going to open up my material editor. The d default is usually M. I have a material in here. It's basically just, just a material with a blue color. It's kind of a medium or dark bluish color. I change the opacity to 30% and I apply it to that plane. I close that. This allows me to constantly see through the polygons as I'm modeling. I don't I don't need a grayscale. If I were to have this in grayscale, after a while I might get confusing as you're modeling it, but if I do it as a as a uh, slightly see-through uh, polygon, I can actually um, do quite a lot of work and and complete this model without me having to uh, go back and forth and back and forth and change the materials. I'll just keep it as a, a semi-transparent material to begin with. But go ahead and select my edge, grab that one edge. I'm going to use spacebar to ro uh, lock it. Make sure I'm in my select and move tool and make sure I'm in X and Y. I'm going to hold my shift and and move it over. Hold shift, move it over. Okay. I'm going to go back to my vertices. I'm going to go ahead and pull some of this in like this. Now I, I'm looking at this main big brow is just one big piece right now. I'm going to be cutting it up in just a second, but I want to make sure we've got uh, just the, the basic shape of this brow. I'm going to hold my space bar to lock again. And I'm just going to move it over here. Go back into my vertices. I unlock that. Uh, the verts. All right. Now, obviously, uh, we're getting good shape, but if we go to our right hand view, it's flat, obviously. So, we're just going to go ahead in our top view, we're going to go ahead and just pull some of this down and out, okay? Just to create a bit of a curve. Everybody knows sort of kind of what an eyebrow would look like, so it shouldn't be uh, super difficult to just pull some of this out. Okay, I'll just pull this around and pull this back a little bit. Okay, let's go to our right hand view. All right, so let's go ahead and just pull this forward. Okay, I'm going to do it to right about where this eye starts on the side. And now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select my vertice, I'm going to hit or my edge, I'm going to hit ring. Okay, then I'm just going to hit connect. I'll go into my right hand view again 
and now I can just pull it forward. If I want, I can actually chamfer that. So I now have technically two edges. I can still pull those forward. And in my front view, I can now start adjusting vertices as I need to. Okay. So start pulling this down. Okay. This is this is basically all it is. It's just modeling from one view then moving it around from another view, you know, and just you slowly will build the shapes you need like right there. I've got that shape in the front. Let's go to our top view. We can pull this out a little bit now that we can see more of what we're doing in our top view. Sometimes, especially for shapes for faces, it's, it's always best to try and get a little bit of an exaggeration in there. And I'm going to grab this one edge here, hit my loop, and I'm going to pull this down and out. And on this one, I'm going to hit loop and pull this down and over. We're not going for exact because this the the orthographic shots that that I started with weren't technically orthographic, so I just want to make sure this this is going to look good because uh, some of this stuff is going to uh, change as I take the model into ZBrush uh, eventually, anyway. Uh, but I, so I just want to get some of the basis of the stuff working. I'm going to go ahead and change this, pull this down a little bit since we know that we not want, want it to be kind of in a growling type of state. okay. I'm going to go ahead and grab these two edges here. I'm just going to pull them straight across on the X. I'm going to now scale. Make sure you don't, you're not, you want the non-uniform scale. Do not scale in the uniform scale. Non-uniform scale, make sure X is on, and I'm going to just, I'm just left clicking and holding, and that's, uh, straightening that line out. I'm going to move it over a little bit. I'm going to look from the top real quick. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay, right hand view. Make X, Y, and now I'm just dragging what will be polygons for the nose. Okay. I'm going to pull these up a little bit. And again, because this wasn't 100% orthographic, I'm kind of blending between the two. I'm averaging out the two of them. I'm going to go into my top view, and obviously we don't want something quite this 90-degree um, angle, so I'm going to actually angle that back a little bit. I'm also going to go ahead and get into my uh, edge tool, grab the ring, and I'm going to connect this as well, because I want to change the shape of this nose and pull this out a little bit. And I'm going to actually pull this in so we get a little bit of a crinkle. Okay. Oops. Right. You can turn on, uh, you can click G to see where you are on the grid. Right now, obviously, I'm a little over on the grid, so I'm going to grab those, hold my spacebar to lock them. I'm going to get into the Move tool, uh, go to the Snaps, I'm sorry, go to the Options, make sure your, the Axis Constraints are on, and I'm going to actually snap, I'm going to turn my grid, uh, grid lines on, and I'm just going to pull these over and snap them right there to the the center line. Okay, I'm going to turn off the grid lines because I don't need them now. I'm going to hit G and I'm going to continue on. I'm going to go ahead and just grab these and start pulling them around a little bit. I'm going to pull these up. But as you, you can see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. I'm just slowly starting to build. Basically, it's building silhouettes. I build silhouettes in, in one direction. I then build, build more silhouettes in another direction and then start to work it from there. Now, I can go from the front, but I think I'll go from the right-hand view. Okay, I'm going to pull these polys out. And I'm going to pull one under for that lip that's going to be there. 
Okay. Then again, because this is in 100% orthogonal, I'm a little long, so I'm going to actually average these up just a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to spread this out. Because if we don't spread them out, we don't want um, straight up and down um, edge loops because it's going to start, you're going to find you're, you're adding more stuff in than, than anything else. So I like to start, start angling things out as I need to. In this case, that's what I'm doing right there. And again, with the, the strip modeling or the edge modeling, okay, I'm going to follow this basic shape of the, the upper mouth. So I'm going to hold down my shift, shift, shift. You can start to rotate your, uh, it around. Make sure you're rotating from the center. Shift, rotate around, shift, rotate around. You can do the entire mouth this way, obviously. All right, I'm going to adjust some of these a little bit. We want to try and keep an average um, on the size of the polygons, especially usually in the face. You want to try and make sure that you've got something that's um, sort of similar in size because if you start to get, uh, the polygons start to get too far apart, then it's going to start stretching and it's not going to look good. And of course, once you put uh, textures on it, it's really going to get wonky. So let's go to our right hand view. Now, as you can see, because we were only working from one angle, all of the polygons in are, are in a straight line. So we're going to now just go ahead and grow this a couple times. And now we're going to just pull back. There we go. Shrink it. Pull it back. Shrink it. Pull it back. See, I'm just pulling it back shrinking it to about what we know we're going to need okay good and now I'm actually going to in my top view or in my bottom view I'm going to pull this out because we want to make sure we have a bit of a rounded mouth not a convex shape to that so I'm going to pull this out and around and I'm going to grab this one. Oops. Grab this. Pull it around. Okay. So this is base. This really is the base for uh, edge modeling or strip modeling. Uh, again, I think that's what they call it nowadays is just edge modeling. For me, it's always strip modeling. As you can see, if I go ahead and do a quick uh, symmetry or mirroring to do an instance. And I lock the snaps, and I snap it over. Grab that one. Grab back to my material. Let's go ahead and just apply a material real quick. And we're going to grab the vertices. We'll go down to a nice. Uh, we're just doing a smoothing group on it. That's just uh, the same smoothing group all over. If I hit my P for perspective, you can see how this is now working out. Okay, this is just strip modeling, edge modeling, and you can do the entire face. It's basically modeling from one direction, then moving it over here and moving polygons around. Then you can model, then you model another strip, go to your front, and now you start to adjust it. And then you make sure, though, that it's not just, it's never just, I tell this to my students, it's never just right or left. It's never just front. You want to make sure you get in your perspective view and start looking around as well and see where your model might, might need to be adjusted. We can turn around and go, okay, well, these edges need to pull out right here. We'll just loop that. We're going to pull, pull that out a little bit. There we go. Down. Same with over here. There we go. So we're getting more of a rounded mouth. And then you just basically, as, as you're working these strips and building your model up, you just fill in all the rest, basically. So again, that's pretty much it for, for strip modeling or, or edge modeling. Just start with an edge and model out. Take that same edge and adjust as you need to in your other view. Always change your views. Always uh, model from different uh, 
angles and then check everything in a perspective view and see how it's looking from the top and or the bottom so you know how your model is going because you don't want anything too wonky looking. Uh, a, lot, a lot of times I see some students when they model just from the front or just from the back or from the side, you can tell because it only looks good from that one angle. It never looks good from any other angle. In this case, if I were to build this out and actually have for a different video, uh, it comes out to be looking pretty good uh, as a game resolution model, which is what I used as the basis to then do an entire series uh, of ZBrushing based on this work head. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you. This has been 3dmotive.com, and my name is Stephen G. Wells.